everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Play Warhammer 40k 7th Edition. As always, my name is Jay, and in this episode I will be covering the Psychic Phase, the technically third phase in a typical turn of Warhammer 40k 7th Edition. Now, the, the Psychic Phase is actually one of the new really, really cool, interesting phases that was added to the game in 7th Edition. Prior to that, Psychic Phases happened throughout the turn, but to clean that up now, they only happen in one specific Phase, which is called the Psychic Phase. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, at the start, before the game begins, you roll uh, a Psychic Power for each Mastery level of each Psyker you have in your army, giving them that power from various tables. But now, before we start in the Psychic Phase, let's go over the different types of Psychic Powers that you have access to in a typical game of Warhammer 40k 7th Edition. Now the first type is called a Blessing, and just as the name suggests, a Blessing gives a bonus trait uh, some type of bonus could be a better armor save, could be a better ballistic skill, could, it's some trait could be a better cover to either the Psyker, the Psyker and his squad, or a squad within a certain distance of the Psyker. The next type is Malediction. It's the opposite of the Blessing types. Malediction, rather than doing something good to yourself, does something bad to your opponent. So once again, it does either a, it does something bad, either decreases their weapon skill, decreases their ballistic skill, hurts them in some way, uh, and these types are the types that are easier to uh, to deny that by your opponent than blessings. But we'll be going over down the aisle in just a moment. The next type of psychic power that I'll be discussing is called conjuration. And what conjuration essentially does is, as the word suggests, conjuring it either transports models from one side of the table to the other. It can allow the squad to disappear and re deep strike in, or it could bring in models that weren't in the game already such as in the demon army, the demons can conjure other demons and actually increase the size of their army by creating new demons. So conjuration is a lot of fun and uh, it can be pretty crazy in Warhammer 40k 7th edition. The next type is called Witchfire, and Witchfires are basically psychic shooting attacks that happen during the psychic phase. The important rule is that you do not necessarily have to fire at the same squad during the shooting phase as you cast the Witchfire psychic powers in the psychic phase. You can choose a different target. And what Witchfire essentially do is they act like psychic shooting powers, so use, use the ballistic skill of the caster, whoever's casting the power, and, uh, and you shoot accordingly. I will be covering the shooting phase in depth in a future video. Another type of psychic power is a beam. It's kind of like a shooting phase, but instead of shooting a, a bullet specifically at your opponent, you shoot a beam a certain distance, and any model under the beam that you shoot is automatically hit. The next power is called a focused witch fire, which is similar to a witch fire, but rather than shooting at a specific squad, you can target a specific model in that squad. That way you can try to get the wounds on the important ones and ignore the less important models in the squad. Finally, we have the Nova Psychic Powers. And Nova Psychic Powers are basically a shooting attack that shoots in all directions, kind of like an explosion, and hits every squad within a certain distance of the Psyker casting the Nova Power, usually between six and 12 inches, and just automatically hits them and inflicts hits on those squads. Now that we've discussed the different types, let's talk about how to actually cast Psychic Powers in Warmer 40K 7th Edition. So each psychic phase begins with the controlling player of the Psyker rolling a d6, a single dice. Both players take that number from that dice and add all of the psychic mastery levels of their army together on top of that number. For example, if you have a mastery level 2 librarian in your army and he's your only Psyker and you roll a 4, you get 4 plus 2, so 6 dice for your psychic pool for this phase. Just like your opponent gets four plus their psychic mastery levels for their dice pool for this phase. Your dice pool is going to be used to try to generate psychic powers and your opponent's dice pool is going to be trying to use to deny your psychic powers which is called denying the witch. Another important factor with psychic powers is what's called a warp charge. A warp charge dictates the minimum number of success dice that you will need to roll in order to cast that power. And what exactly is a success? It is a four up on a dice. So whoever's turn it is, whoever psychic power they're casting has to roll equal to or more four ups than the warp charge necessary to cast that psychic power. Now I might know now you might be asking, 
How many dice can you roll for your psychic power? That's completely up to you, the controlling player. You can roll as many or as few dice from your dice pool as you want for each psychic power. However, once you've used a dice, it can no longer be used for a future psychic power in that turn. So if you have six dice, like the example we just used, and you have two different psychic powers, you can use between one and six dice for the first power, and then use any amount of the remaining dice for the second power. And as I mentioned, you have to roll equal to or greater than the warp charge. So if you're trying to cast a warp charge one psychic power, and you roll, you choose to roll three dice, you need to have at least one four up in order to cast that psychic power. However, once a psychic power has been cast, your opponent has a chance to deny that psychic power, which as I mentioned is called Deny the Witch. However, Denying the Witch is much more difficult than casting a psychic power. Denying the Witch is typically only done on sixes. So for every success, four up that you roll, your opponent has to roll a six on a dice to deny that psychic power. So if you roll three dice and you get two successes, like here, your opponent actually has to roll two sixes in order to deny that psychic power. And once again, your opponent can choose to use as few or as many dice from his or her psychic pool of dice as they want. So they can use all four dice and just throw them down and hopefully get two sixes in order to deny your psychic power. There are bonuses to denying the witches. However, for a bonus to exist, it has to be an offensive psychic power. So you, so if you're trying to deny blessings, you can only deny on sixes. However, for maledictions and witch fires, as well as novas, beams, and, and uh, focus witch fires, there are some bonuses that armies can get to denying the witch. For example, if the squad being focused with a malediction or witchfire psychic power has either the Psyker, Brotherhood of Psychers, or Psychic Pilot special rule, they get a plus one bonus to their dice for Deny the Witch. So they can deny the witch on five ups instead of six ups on their dices. And another bonus is if a member of the squad being targeted has a psychic with a higher mastery level than the one being than the one casting the psychic power. So if a level 1 Librarian is casting a Psychic Power in a squad containing a level 2 Librarian, the level 2 Librarian gets another plus 1 to, de to deny the Witch Rolls. So they can deny the Witch Rolls on a 4-up, because they get plus 1 bonus for having a Psyker in the squad, and a plus 1 bonus for having a Psyker with a higher Mastery level. So they get to deny on 4-ups rather than 6-ups. And finally, a squad gets a plus one bonus on their deny the witch rolls if they have the adamantium will special rule as well. So you can potentially deny on three ups, while most armies get to deny on six ups. The last thing I must discuss during the psychic phase is what's called perils of the warp. Now typically, perils of the warp happens if the person casting the psychic power, when they try to manifest their psychic power when they roll their dice, rolls two or more sixes on their dice. So if you roll four dice and you get two or more sixes, for example, that is a Perils of the Warp. However, there are some psychic powers that are so powerful that if you fail to cast them, so if you fail to, if you try to, to cast them and you fail, that is an automatic Perils of the Warp. And Perils of the Warp, as the name suggests, is a pretty bad thing for your Psyker. If you have a Perils of the Warp exist, you roll a dice and match it up to the specific table. Essentially, the lower the dice, the worse it is for your uh, for your Psyker. On a 1, you roll a leadership test, and if they fail, they're dead and they hurt their squad, and it, a lot of bad stuff happens. However, on a 6, if you roll a 6, it actually could be a bonus to your squad. It could really help the Psyker. So, Perils of the Warp is typically bad, but not always. So, let's go through a brief, quick example of how to cast Psychic Powers in Warmer 40k 7th edition. So let's pretend a Dark Angels player with a level 2 Librarian is up against an Orcs player with no Psychers whatsoever. At the beginning of the Dark Angels player's turn, he rolls a dice, and he rolls a 4. So he gets 4 dice plus 2 because he has a level 2 Librarian in his army for his dice pool. The Orc player, however, has no Psychers in his army, so only gets equal to the dice being 4, number of dice to deny the Witch. The level 2 Librarian tries to cast Prescience, 
which is a warp charge one psychic power. And he knows it's a warp charge one psychic power because it's in the top right of that card. Warp charge one. So he tries to use three of his six dice to cast warp charge one prescience on his squad. And he succeeds by rolling two four up dice. However, the orc player does not want that psychic power to get off. So the orc player will use all four of his dice to try to deny the witch for that prescience. But since prescience is a blessing and does not focus on the orc squad, the orc can only deny on a six up. So he rolls four dice and successfully rolls two sixes on his four dice. So the power is denied and the, basically he's denied the witch. And that's essentially it. And now the Dark Angel player can use that remaining three dice if he wants to cast another power. And if he rolls equal to or greater than the warp charge, he successfully gets that power off. Now I should mention that Focus Witchfire Psychic Powers are slightly different than Witchfire Psychic Powers in, in the way that you manifest them. To successfully manifest a Focus Witchfire uh, Psychic Power, you need to roll greater than the Warp Charge uh, required to get the Psychic Power off. So it's a, if it's a Warp Charge 2, you need to roll three or more successes on your dice, so three or four, three or more four ups on your dice in order to successfully manifest a focus witch fire and target that specific model in that squad. If you roll an equal to number as the warp charge, so it's warp charge two and you only roll two successes, you cannot target that specific member. Instead, a random member of that squad is targeted. So the odds are you're probably not going to target the individual that you wanted to, but you will still get to get your witch fire at them. And of course, if you roll less than the warp charge, it is considered a failure to, to cast and uh, you can't use your Witchfire. Another important factor is that a unit cannot cast the same psychic power more than once per psychic phase. So if you happen to have a squad of guys and there are two psychers in the squad both knowing the same power, they cannot cast that same power in the same psychic phase, unfortunately. Again, it should be considered that this is true whether or not the psychic power is passed or failed. So if you fail to cast a psychic power with a squad, that specific squad cannot reattempt that psychic power for this psychic phase. But of course they can retry next phase. And remember, you only get a psychic phase if you have a psyker. So if you don't have any psychic powers, you can't cast them in the psychic phase, so there's no point in psychic phase for you. So each psychic phase begins with the controlling player rolling a dice. And both players get a dice pool equal to the number of dice equal to that specific dice number plus all the mastery levels of their army combined. The controlling player can attempt to use as many or as little of those dice to cast the psychic powers that the, that the psychers know. And to successfully get them off, they need to roll equal to or greater than the warp charge required on the card or psychic power. The opposing player can try to deny using as few or as many dice from their dice pool as they want. And once again, both dice pools, you can only use each dice once. So once you use a dice to cast a power or try to deny a witch on a specific power, you cannot use that dice anymore during that phase. And if the power gets off and the opponent does not deny it, it's a success. If the opponent denies it, it's a failure. And there's this thing as perils of the warp, which typically happens when the psychic player rolls two sixes during their manifestation rolls and usually that leads to something bad unfortunately and that's it so i really hope you enjoyed this episode of how to play warmer 40k 7th edition and uh, please leave a comment in the comment section down below if there's anything else that i missed or you want to add to the conversation and together we will teach all new players warmer 40k 7th edition so thank you very much for watching once again and until next time this is jay saying